Farms.com Market School with expert commodity analyst Mo Agostino is an online educational video series designed to help you, the farmer, improve your knowledge of grain marketing. Farms.com Market School is brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds. DeKalb, growing confidence. Today's video is about defining the old adage, short crop, long tail, and what to expect in the future. Our topics today include, what is short crop, long tail? We're gonna define that old adage. Short crop years, we're gonna look at some examples of short crop years and yields, what happened to yields in those years. And then we're gonna look at how to call market tops in those short crop years. Let's start off with our first topic, defining what a short crop, long tail is. This is the uh, US drought monitor map from NOAA in the United States. If anybody remembers the US 2012 drought, it was very devastating, it was the warmest in 91 years. This is a picture of what that drought was doing the corn in the United States. It was the worst drought since 19. 1956. The heat and drought destroyed corn yields. In fact, those corn yields dropped down to about 122.8. Earlier that spring, USDA was forecasting a 164 trend line yield. I got to also note that if you look at this yield chart here, that's an anomaly. That was a very rare case. Can it happen again? Sure it can, but just be careful. Understand that this was a rare case. The 2012 U.S. drought dropped U.S. average corn yields to 122.8 bushels per acre. Going back to the U.S. drought monitor map, you can see here from the map that uh, by the time we got to September of that year, uh, that Midwest U.S. corn belt was extremely dry. That red or purple dark brown areas is an extreme drought and uh, that's when futures peaked. The 2012 U.S. drought qualifies as a short crop long tail year like 1988. You can see from the daily chart of corn provided by www.mrci.com that corn futures soared in 1988 to ration out demand eventually peaked and created the long tail. So a short crop year is defined by three principles. The first one is prices need to move up sharply to ration demand. The second principle is a short crop, a smaller amount of bushels, is usually followed by a larger crop, more abundant amount of bushels. The third principle is once the peak is in, an extended period of declining prices is required to bring demand back in line with the new production. So our second topic today is just looking at more examples and how short crop years impact yields. Here's a chart that uh, we've created to show you what the impact that yields have in short crop years. And you can see that short crop years can create double digit declines in yields. Short crop years also create double digit declines in soybean yields as well. You can see this from uh, the chart we've just provided similar to corn yields. Another example is using the uh, USDA corn balance sheet. I've provided you with a chart here. And again, in the 2012-13 marketing year, ending stocks dropped to a low of 633 million bushels. The final number that the USDA printed was 849, but uh, along that year, we did print a number of 633. And that's critical because that drives prices higher. Uh, the high was 849. Eventually, uh, in the 13-14 marketing year, just before we planted all those acres at 97.5, USDA was making some projections that ending stocks would be big in that 1.8 to 2 billion. They were projecting corn prices to drop to three to four bucks a bushel. And in fact, the final ending stocks number was 1.887 billion bushels and the price of corn dropped to about uh, 410, 420 a bushel in that year. If mother nature provides a normal growing season, Stocks use ratio will go from a tight four or five percent in a short crop year to a very wide 15 percent. That's usually very bearish for corn futures. Let's use the USDA soybean balance sheet as another example. So in 2012-13, ending stocks dropped to about 115 million at one point that I think the lowest we've ever printed is 110. The final number was 169, 169 million bushels. And for a brief moment, futures touched 1789 per bushel. For a brief moment, the market thought that the yields in the United States had dropped to about 35 bushels per acre. The final number came in around 39 and change. The following year, USDA was projecting higher yields, higher acres, higher ending stocks in that closer to 190 to maybe 400 million bushels. The final number actually came in at 170. They were looking for prices to drop in that nine to $10 range, and eventually the price got as low as 1169. Again, if Mother Nature provides that normal growing season, stocks use ratio will jump higher, eventually very bearish for soybean futures. 
Our third topic today is about how to call tops in short crop years. Here's an example using corn again. This is a, a daily futures chart of corn December 2012. And you can see the big spike in prices between the late June right into August. And then it starts to roll over, peaks around that 849 in the middle of August and starts to create that long tail. Here's another chart here that I've created. These are the speculators, the big managed money hedge funds. They were very long during that period of time in the month of August. You can see here that uh, corn uh, speculators are long 300 plus thousand contracts. Soybeans long 230, wheat long 77,000. Having some idea of uh, whether they're record long or not is a, a, a good indicator whether you should be pulling the trigger or holding on to further selling any more bushels. So you know the top is in when these managed money crowd, these speculators are very long and you're at seasonal highs during that June, July period. You also know you're at tops when the media has started to report the 2012 drought. Farmers want to speculate and go along to try to make money because all the experts are telling you that corn's going to 10 bucks a bushel. And then finally, the technicals, the charts start to roll over with the short-term moving averages, the 30 crossing the 50 to the downside as corn futures create that rolling top formation. These are all good excuses to pull the trigger and be an aggressive seller at the market top. Here's that uh, corn example again. It's a longer term chart of corn. We see the big spike in 2012 and that creates that long tail. Uh, that long tail got even longer in 2013 as you uh, moved on into time. And then of course there's the soybean futures example where you get the big spike up to 1789 peaks at the seasonal highs. Remember the managed money crowd were very long. And then of course it creates that long tail. So bottom line, booking for next year's crop when the old crop is peaking at seasonal highs, probably not a bad idea. Selling corn at 650 a bushel, beans at 14, canola at 550, wheat at eight, nine dollars a bushel, probably makes a a lot of sense knowing that your input costs are not going to drop that much. Booking up to a maximum of 50% of your guaranteed bushel yield, insurance yield, also makes sense. At 50% you can pay a lot of bills, it's a good start. At 50% you can, you're not overbooked, but you're not underbooked. Leaving you with some room to sell more at higher prices if Mother Nature doesn't cooperate the following year.